Mark your calendars from May 1st through the 2nd for Unchained, the Triumphant Church of God's virtual ladies retreat. This weekend will be filled with powerful prayer meetings, nightly worship services, and a workshop for the single ladies as well as a workshop for the married women. Join us this weekend for a wonderful time of fellowship and sisterhood. If you would like to know more about the Triumphant Church of God, or you want to stay in touch with us throughout the week, be sure to follow us on our social media platforms. On Facebook and YouTube, you can find us at the Triumphant Church of God. And on Instagram, you can find us at triumphant.youth. These are this week's triumphant announcements. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week. And always remember to live triumphantly. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Are you today, God? In the name of Jesus, we are triumphant and we have the victory. We bless you today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone in the house, I want to welcome you to the triumphant church of God and welcome you into the presence of the Lord. Those of you at home, we welcome you and we're glad that you're able to join today and we're expecting a move of the Lord unlike any other this morning. And as we come together, we just expect that the Lord will bless us as we give him glory and honor. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Our worship team is coming at this time. And we're about to be blessed as we worship together. Let's worship together. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify the name of the Lord this morning. For he is great and greatly to be praised. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad this morning? For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. And be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, God. For there is none like you in all the earth. We lift you up. We magnify you. And we give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to take it back this morning. Is that all right? Is that okay? Everybody just clap your hands with us.
the voices praise him. Praise him. Let's sing it out. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Bless his Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Just one voice. Praise him. Praise Him, oh yes, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, oh let us praise Him, we call on that name, Jesus, bless His Savior, He's worthy, He's worthy to be praised, from the rising of
on everybody, lift your hands and give him praise. Give him glory in the house this morning. He's worthy of the glory, the honor. Oh, come on, somebody, you can do better than that. For the God that you serve, is he worthy? Come on, open your mouth and give him glory. Worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's bless him this morning. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul shall make her boast, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Someone say continually. Continually. Let us bless the Lord together. Hallelujah. Let us magnify his name. For he alone is worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus this morning. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Blessed Savior. The songwriter said he's worthy to. Worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Surely the presence of the Lord, Pastor Richards, is in this place. Songwriter said, I can feel the brush of angels' wings. When shall I see glory on each face? Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels, evangelist Ben, all around. Let's just praise. Help me worship, team. Jesus now. We are standing in. God's presence on holy ground. Can I just get the keyboard? Can I just get the keyboard? We are standing on holy ground. And I know there are angels all around. Let's just praise. Let's just praise. Jesus now. We are standing. God's presence on holy ground. Let's just pray. Jesus now. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We are dead. 
Sister Quiddy, Jacob was running from his brother, and one night, while he was on the run, running, 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 doing everything, one night he came in contact with the angel of the Lord. came in contact with God. And when he came in contact with God, he wrestled all night. All night he wrestled. And as he wrestled, his hip was out of place and he said, I will not let you go. Someone say, I will not let him go this morning. I came to get my blessing. And he is here this morning. And I'm going to get my blessing this morning. And he did not let go. His name was changed. His character was changed. Everything about him was changed. You can't come into the presence of the Lord, Pastor Richards. You know this. And stay the same. And he changed in that moment. And he said, surely the presence of the Lord was here and I did not even know it. Amen. This morning the presence of the Lord is here. But do we know it? His presence can heal. His presence can deliver. His presence can bless. But do we recognize the presence of the Lord? When Moses came in contact with the Lord, the Lord told him, take off your shoes. Because the place that you are standing, I wonder if we know we are on holy ground this morning. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Those of you watching online, those of you in the building, amen. Our desire is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's, it's not about the cheers, the lights, the camera, the mute, it's about the presence of the Lord. And everything we do is centered run right around his presence. Amen. The Bible says, oh, that man would praise the Lord. Oh, that man would praise. And otherwise, acknowledge who he is. Would speak well of him. Amen. 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 I'm going to get into the word. Before I do, I want to greet our bishop, all the pastors, respective ministers, uh, lay members, everybody in the house. I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus. You can greet me back too. You know. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. It is a good thing for brethren to come together. How good and pleasant it is 
for us to dwell together in unity, in unity, amen, amen. I didn't come to preach about unity this morning, but it is powerful because the Bible says that when all the saints were on one accord, then the Spirit of the Lord descended, amen, and sat upon every man as cloven tongues of fire. Amen. If you turn your Bibles with me, it's a very familiar passage, uh, the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, Jonah chapter 1, amen. It's an Old Testament passage, so if you see John, or first and second and third John, you are in the wrong place. Take the, put an A in it, there's a Jonah, you'll find Jonah, amen. Yesterday morning, uh, well, let me start with Monday morning. Monday morning, I woke up and uh, start to wake everybody up, get everyone ready for school. And um, everyone says, oh, but I'm tired. No matter what time my children go to bed at night, you can send them to bed at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The next morning, it's, oh, I'm tired. Tuesday morning, oh, but daddy, I'm tired. Did you cook? Did you iron? Did you clean anything? Did you wash anything? No, I'm tired. Wednesday morning, all right, guys, let's get ready. But, Daddy, I'm tired. Thursday morning, come on, guys, let's, let's get ready to go. Good morning, everybody. Rise, you know, I have to be very creative. I have to walk in the room sometimes and sing songs. Good morning, good morning, you know. Oh, Daddy. I'm tired. Friday morning, everybody up, everybody go. Come on and put your clothes on with me. Or come on and brush your teeth with me. Come on, I get some help. Come on and brush your teeth with me. Come on and brush. You know, I got to make up all sorts of song, songs and do anything Friday morning. Saturday morning. I'm lying in bed, 6.30 in the morning. Good morning, Daddy! The sun is shining. It's time to get up. The one day I say, you know, I'm going to stay in bed a little longer, you know, and, and they just, they don't just you know, come in the bed, they want to climb on you, they want to lie on you, and they want to, all sorts of things. All of a sudden, <laughs> five days a week, everybody is tired. But come Saturday morning, and Sunday morning too, Come Saturday and Sunday morning, everybody's got all the energy in the world. Amen. It's amazing, Pastor Watson, how we find the energy to do the things we want to do. You wouldn't believe that my children love school, but there's something about the getting ready and all of that, that suddenly everybody's tired. And, and, and I have a son there, he, he's something else, because this brother will wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, Daddy, you want to hear a joke? <laughs> Another time he'll come, Evangelist Wilson, and he'll say, Daddy, I want you to come and stay with me. 
brother, it is 3 o'clock in the morning. Go back to your bed and sleep. I want you to come and stay with me. You know, the one thing, he'll jump over mommy and climb on me. You know, the other night, you know, I got kicked out of the bed. Well, not kicked out, but I'm, I'm not comfortable with both of them in the bed beside me because I just feel like maybe something, I might elbow them or something. And I, I'm not going to sleep comfortably. So one morning, Sister Sonia, I end up in Arya's bed next to all these strange women. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Someone say sleep, sleep on, sleep on. Anyway, we look at Brother Jonah. Brother Jonah, in chapter 1, this is a very powerful passage of Scripture. Four chapters. But there's so much locked inside of this Scripture. So much locked inside of this story. I really don't know how much, but I hope I can give a word to you this morning. Amen. And the Bible says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Jonah, the son of Amittai. Very fascinating character. Very fascinating character. What what rocks my world, number one, about Jonah This is not actually the first time that we see Jonah. We actually see Jonah in the book of 2 Kings, building a wall. He he, he is on a construction site. He is the prophet of the time, and he is in the book of 2 Kings, and he's telling, he's giving instructions. And giving orders, he's got the concrete, he's got the blocks, Winchell, Deacon Brown, he's got the bricks, he's got the wheelbarrow, and he's building a wall because there's a country that keeps invading the land that he's living in, which is called Israel Bishop. And they keep coming in, and, and, and because the defenses are down, because everything is, is falling apart, Jonah, a prophet of the Lord, takes the initiative and starts to build. He, he's, he, he's, he's doing what, what he thinks is right because the defenses in, in, in the city are down. The place is being broken down and they keep coming in. And, and not only are they just coming in, they are brutalizing people. They are raping people. They are doing all sorts of things to the people of Israel. It is a disgrace what is happening. This country called Assyria is, is, is a, a wicked set of people. Wicked set of people. They're the type of people that cut babies out of pregnant women. Amen. They, they were committing abortion before there was a word called abortion. They, they were the type of people that would rape, 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 and, and, and to show their dominance. Uh, I can't even preach about that. But to show their dominance within the country, they would kill the men and rape the women. A wicked set of people. And, 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 and it, he, then the Bible says that he, while he's building the wall, he, 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 after a while, the, the word of the Lord comes to him. The son of Amittai. Now, what, what, what rocks my world, number one, is that it is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, and and the word Lord there, if you look at it in the Bible, it is not just a regular rendition of the word Lord. It is representative of Yahweh. It is representative of God himself, who God truly is. It 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 wasn't just, it, it it, it was like the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Now, this same Word is the Word that was coming to Brother Jonah. This was no ordinary Word. This was no, a prophet said to the prophet. 
He didn't stand on the line in, a, in, a, in an altar call and someone lay hands on him and spoke over him. This was God himself speaking to Jonah. I wonder if God has ever, has ever spoken to anyone in the house. God is speaking directly to Jonah. God had a word directly to Jonah. And I come to let you know that God has a word for you. God has an instruction, an insight, a wisdom, an understanding specifically for you. Hello, somebody. Amen. It's the, you see, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I, I, I think about when, when someone is, is, when they have those, when they have a wedding ceremony or they're having, um, uh, what do you call it, the reception, and, and, and you know, you say, the bride freed the groom, the bride freed the groom, and I don't know why we, we do this, but you put it, you do the bird thing where you, you put the food in your mouth. Well, the word of the Lord is just like that, like a mother feeding, and here it is. The word, the actual word of the Lord comes to Brother Jonah. Lord, what are we going to do with the word that comes to us? The word that God brings to us. Amen. We hear so many words, so many awesome messages, so much well-prepared messages, so much research. We hear a word directly. Sometimes we say, my God, we just heard from heaven. I wonder what are we going to do with the word that we receive, Bishop? Brother Jonah gets a word from the Lord that says, arise. Here it is. The man is the same man that is helping to build a wall, and yet God is still telling him to arise. Because sometimes we get involved in activities, and because we have good intentions, we, we, we miss out on what God is trying to accomplish in the season. So we try to solve the problem on our own. We try to fix things on our own without first getting a word. You don't like how I'm preaching. Without first getting a word from the Lord. So we do little things like lie on our taxes. Uh oh, it's tax season. And we do little things like falsify documents so we can purchase something. And we do little things like that and we hide and do little things. And God is saying, if you would just get a word from me. You, you, you wouldn't have to go, oh Lord, have mercy. Brother Jonah gets a word from the Lord, Deacon Thompson, and he's there and he, he says to himself, Lord, have mercy. What is this? Go to Nineveh? No, you could have sent, you, listen, you could have sent me anywhere. Anywhere in the world. You could have given me, any, you could have given me any task to do, but this Maybe they raped his sister. Maybe they took, they took his money. Maybe they, they, they did all sorts of things right in his own backyard. And you're telling me, God, now to go to Nineveh? The thing about Nineveh now is that Nineveh is the actual capital city of Assyria. You couldn't send me to the suburbs, let me preach in the hills. You're telling me uh, my, the very enemy of my country, these people don't even like me, and you are sending me into this impossible situation to go? Why would God send Jonah into this place? Well, number one, I want to submit to you that God sends us into impossible situations to prove that he is God. God sends us into Nineveh because he wants to plunder places that we've never been before. One songwriter said, I went down into the enemy's camp and took back. Lord, have mercy. What he stole from me. Don't rush, don't rush my notes, Evangelist Richards. Don't rush me. But he went down to this place. Lord, I feel this word in my belly. Went down to Nineveh. And the Bible calls him a prophet of the Lord. The Bible says he's a servant of God. When the Bible calls someone a servant, 
That means that they have a destiny. They have a purpose. Oh, you don't like the word servant because you think it's just oh, walk, walking around with a tray and giving people food or whatever. But, but listen, when God calls you a servant, it means that he trusts you. It means you, 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 you have a destiny. He has something that he wants you to accomplish. It means that you have had an interaction and an encounter with him that decides where you go, when you go, and how you go. Is there a servant of the Lord in this house? Hallelujah. That, that, that means that anytime you see the Bible call someone a servant, it means that God has ordained them for that moment. He has sanctified them for that moment. Let someone say, this is my moment. Hallelujah. He was ordained for a task. Lord God, I feel this word in my belly. Is there a servant in the house? Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his... You can write that down, Amos 3 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing, Brother Ricky, without revealing his secret to his servants. The prophets. First Corinthians 4 verse 1 says, So then let us who minister be regarded as servants of Christ and stewards, administrators, trustees of the mysteries of God that he chooses to reveal Pastor Richards. David said in Psalms 119, verse 129, <clears throat> I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. Jonah's time, when he was born, when he, when he came into to being who he was, was a little bit after Elijah and Elisha. So more than likely, he was part of the school of the prophets. More than likely, he had the training. He had the teaching. He had the exposure. He had the know-how. He had been to the seminary. He had got the t-shirt. Well, he had got the collar. He had got the you name it. All the credentials. All the recognition for people to know this is who he says he is. But, but my question is, why would a prophet run from God? With all the credentials, with all the respect, with all the things that came with being a prophet, why would he run from God? And I, 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 I don't want us to hasten too quickly to judge Jonah because if we're being quite frank and we're being quite honest, a lot of us, God has called, God has known, God has sanctified, God has ordained, but we ran in the wrong direction. We ran opposite to what God has said that we ought to do. Oh, hallelujah. So we've got the collar, we've got the t-shirt, we've got the credentials, we've got the buttons, we've got the hoodies, we've got the merchandise, we've got all of that together. But in the end of the day, we are not doing what it is God says we ought to do. And the world is looking and saying, that's an evangelist, but that, that person doesn't evangelize. The world is saying, the world is saying, this is what's going on. This is what they say they are. They say they are Christians. They say they follow Christ. They say they believe God. But in reflection of their life, it is opposite to what God is saying. Why would a prophet run? Why would a Christian run? Why would someone that marks themselves as a believer go against what it is that God says that they ought to do? Why would we run? Hallelujah. And many of us, even in this building, sitting in these pews, although we have lifted our hands, although we have danced, although we have sang, although we have shouted, although we have done all those things, deep down inside, we are really on the run. Hallelujah. We are identified on the outside as one thing, but on the inside, our hearts are on the run. 
No wonder someone said, uh, we worship him with our lips, uh, but our hearts are far away from God. Here is Jonah. He was representing who he said he was supposed to be, but deep down inside, he was on the run, and his heart was far. Far away, Pastor Watson, from who God said he ought to be. Lord, have mercy. You don't like how I'm preaching because many of us uh, are on the run. Uh, we've got our running shoes. Uh, we've got on our track suit. Uh, and we put on, we put aside the garment of praise. Uh, and we're on the run. Someone said, I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with you? Let, let them know that my heart has gone far from God. I've gone away from what God said I ought to do. I've gone away from what God said I'm ordained to do. I've gone away from what God said I should accomplish. I'm living below the means I ought to be living. I'm going away from the way that God says I ought to be. And as a result, I wonder if anybody's on the run this morning. Hallelujah. Someone might be on the run this morning, but I come to let you know uh, that you can run, but you cannot hide. Hallelujah. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, hallelujah, and when they sinned uh, and they went far away from what God said they ought to do, uh, they began to put on certain things. Uh, and when they heard the presence of the Lord, when they heard the voice of the Lord, uh, they began to run uh, and they began to hide. But I come to let you know that you can run, but you can't hide. When God saw what was taking place, he said, Adam, Adam. Adam, where art thou? Adam! Hallelujah. And God is saying to some people, where are you? You can run as much as you want. But David said, where can I go from your presence? If I go into the hills, you are there. If I go into the bottom of the belly of hell, you are there. Lord God of mercy, if I take the wings of the morning, he's still there. If I go to the rum bar, I still can't run. If I go to the whorehouse, I still can't run. No hiding place. Down here, I run to the rock. <laughs> and the rock cried out, no hiding place. Lord have mercy, I feel a little old school this morning. There is no hiding place down here. One songwriter said, six men bringing you back to the preacher. Hallelujah, you run, you run, you run. But six men bringing you back. Lord have mercy. I feel this word in my belly. I hope someone is hearing me this morning. You can run, but when God says, uh, I need you, when God says, I want you, you cannot hide. Elijah ran from his calling, ran from what God called him to do. And when he got under the juniper tree, God said, what are you doing down here? Lord, have mercy. I don't know if I can finish this this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and give him glory in the house. Jonah was waiting for God to say, I got a new pulpit for you to preach in. Jonah was waiting for God to say, I got a synagogue for you to go to and take over. Jonah was waiting for them to say, I have a television ministry for you to accomplish. God, Jonah was waiting for God to give him all sorts of things to do. And, jo and God says to Jonah, I got something different. Many of us are looking in one place for our blessing. Looking in one place to be blessed. And God is saying, I've got something different for you. Because we, we, we follow the accolades, we follow the recognition, we follow the fame, and we're so desperate and so hungry to be recognized, so desperate and hungry to be validated that we forget about the will of God for our life, and we would rather be validated by man than to be validated by God. But the Bible said it is a dangerous thing to fall into the hands. 
One songwriter said, uh, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus uh, than riches and toll. I'd rather have Jesus uh, than houses and land. I'd rather be led by his nail-scarred hands uh, than to be a king of a vast domain. Hallelujah. And held in sins. Dread sway. I, I come to speak to every deacon. Come to speak to every pastor, every evangelist, every, every, Lord have mercy. I may have to take right hand of fellowship after this. But listen, I come to speak to everyone in the house uh, that God has called for such a time as this. Uh, and I come to let you know uh, that the running time is over. Hallelujah. The Bible says, in the book of Jonah, that the Bible says he ran away. Well, the Bible says, for their wickedness has come upon me, come up before me. I can't even go into that right now. But he says he ran away to Tarshish to escape from where? He ran away. To escape from the presence of the Lord. We're, we're, we're trying to get away from the presence of the Lord. Because we, we understand the power of His presence. We want the healing that is in His presence. We want the deliverance that is in His presence. But we don't want to be confronted in the areas that we are running short. We're, 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 we don't want to be confronted in the areas where we're weighed in the balance and found wanting evangelist Campbell. But God says, I want you in my presence. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And, and then the Bible says that he went down to take a trip. Hallelujah. Went down to Joppa. Now, the Bible doesn't, the Bible makes it very clear that Jonah went down. You see, when you go away from the presence of the Lord, I wish someone would preach with me this morning. When you go away from the presence of the Lord, it will cause you to make decisions that cause you to go. Lord have mercy. Someone say down. Down. I want to be down with what you're going through. Is, uh, you, you ain't down. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And he went in the opposite direction to a place called Tarshish. And the Bible says he paid the fear. Now to take a trip like this, it costs. It will cost you the distance from Israel to Joppa, Lord have mercy. Many of us are willing to travel the distance from Israel to Joppa, then go to where God is saying to go, then to do what God is saying to do. We would rather pay the fear, hallelujah. And listen, I want to let you know that sin costs. The Bible says in Romans 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. Sin disobedience, rebellion costs. You don't like how I'm preaching. Disobedience cost Saul an entire kingdom. It cost him a legacy. Sin costs. And he paid the fear. So he went down to Joppa. It cost him. Then the Bible says, after he got to Joppa, he went down into the ship. I feel the spirit of the prophet Mary J. Blige. I'm going down. Because you ain't around. And my whole world is upside down. So he starts in Israel goes 
down to Joppa. Then he goes down into the ship. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and the Bible says that when he goes down into the ship, he's on the ship and he's, 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 he's there and he's there. And the Bible says that God hurled a great wind. Evangelist Wilson, God threw. It, 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 when you say hurl, it's like you're throwing a weapon. Can you imagine the prophet of God? And here it is, the weapon of God, a great storm, is being thrown at Jonah. Come on, look at your Bibles with me. You see, because, and then the Bible says, it's not just a, a, a storm, you know. It's a great storm. Someone say great. So God sent him to a great city. But because he wouldn't go into the great city of Nineveh, he ended up in the middle of a great storm. Someone, someone used to say, God, you're chickify, you know. <laughs> Look at the God that we serve. He's supposed to go to a great city. Someone say great. But he instead ends up in a great storm. Oftentimes, the things that we use to run away from God are the same thing that God turns around and brings us great trouble. I wonder if I'm preaching to someone in the house that God has called, that God has pulled up. You see, when our conscience gets quiet, God will speak even louder. The prophet of God who saw the mighty works of Elijah and Elisha. He saw, he saw all the works of God and still his conscience was seared with a hot iron. So much so that God had to speak louder for him to hear. I pray that everyone that is running from God, God begin to... You see, I have to skip over something. When God, when, when God, put it this way, spiritual growth is not measured in how high we jump. It is not measured in how fast we run. I, I, I believe in praise. I believe in lifting up the name. I, I believe in running, jumping, shouting. You know, I believe in all of it. All of it, but spiritual growth is measured in our obedience to the Word of God. Oh, Lord. It is quiet in this Presbyterian church. It, it, it's, it's not how well we march. How well we sing, it is measured. When, in, in when we want to go one way, when we want to do our own thing, Minister McLeod, and God will takes precedence over our will. That's why Jesus, he was rewarded so much because he said, not my will. Lord, let this cup pass, but still, Lord, not my will. But thine be done. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom, he says in the Lord's Prayer. The power and the glory. Even Jesus had to obey. <laughs> and here it is, <laughs> Lord. The Bible says that. God threw a great wind, and the sailors, the ship was about to break up. Look at someone and say, ain't this some ship? The ship is beginning to fall apart. 
The thing that, most, that Jonah was using to get away. The thing he was using to escape. Bishop, it starts to fall apart. Sometimes things are falling apart because we're using them as a vehicle to escape God. We want money so bad that we spend, we, we, we spend our, all our energy trying to make money and that same money just starts to fall apart. We work and work and work and it seems like it's coming in and the faster it comes in, the more it comes in, is the more it rolls out. Lord have mercy, I can hear a rat licking ice in this place. Because the things that we build, the things that are constructed by man to keep us safe, they cannot really keep us safe. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And the ship is falling apart. And here it is. The sealers. <laughs> These are men that are used to sealing. Used to being on ship. Used to being being where they are and, and, and used to operating and navigating and sealing and all that. They're used to this. And, and things were so bad that even these men began to start to cry out. Evangelists, they were crying out to their own God. <laughs> everybody starts to, everybody gets religious in a storm. Everybody gets religious, hallelujah, when things get tempestuous. Everybody gets religious at that time. People you never knew believe in God. You never knew they knew. You even, you grew up in church? When, when, when things start to go bad, suddenly. But, but here, here's the convicting thing. These men are calling out to their God, but the prophet is sleeping. The unsaved man is crying out, but the man who's supposed to know God. Can I, can, I, can I talk to the believers in the house? Hallelujah. It is time for us to arise. It is time for us to wake up. Because the world is crying out. And we might be sleeping. We've got Jesus. We've got the answer to the problems. We have the solution, but we. You see, when we get disobedient, we get very sleepy. Because a storm of this measure, nobody should be sleeping. The Bible says it was a great storm so that even people that know what storms are, even people that understand our sailing and all of that, they're crying out to God. And yet still this man, the prophet, is sleeping. Hey, hey, listen. The Bible says that he was fast asleep. This means that he was so asleep that they could probably hear him snoring upstairs. Disobedience to depression. Some of us are, are depressed because we've been disobedient. Some, some of us are sleepy because we've been disobedient. You don't like how I'm preaching. <laughs> and he's, he's there fast asleep. And then, and then they come down. The captain says to him, how can you be sleeping? How can you sleep? What a thing. The world is saying to the prophet, how can you be sleeping, Deacon Dias? Under this condition, you're sleeping? And, and, and uh, the world is looking at the church and saying, what in the world is going on down there. You see, they had the discernment to realize, wait a minute. 
This is no ordinary storm. This, this is not what we are used to. The world can discern the supernatural and the prophet, Pastor Watson, is asleep. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So, so they say to Noah, Noah, how, uh, jo hear me, Noah, Jonah, how could you be sleeping in a time like this? But then, <laughs> then listen, listen, listen to what they said to him. Get up! And call! Lord God have mercy. Sometimes the things that will preach to you sometimes, I, I, need, I need another mic. Sometimes the things that will preach to you sometimes, it's amazing. They say to this man, get up! <laughs> Hallelujah. Arise! And the word of God is saying to somebody this afternoon, you've been sleeping too long. You've been where you are too long. You've been at the bottom of the ship too long. And God is saying, now is the time to get up! Lord, have mercy. We, 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 can, we can be evangelists and, 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 and gossip. We, we can be deacons and do this and that uh, and fornicate with sisters. We can do all those things. And the world is saying, what is going on inside the church? Hallelujah. Stop, uh, stop the foolishness and get up. Lord, I wonder if anyone is hearing me this afternoon. It's time to wake up. It's time to stop sleeping. It's time to stop snoring. It's time to stop running. Arise and go. And not only do they say arise, but they say to him, call on your God. God bless you. They say to him to call on your God because you're the only one on this ship that could be causing this problem. You see, it doesn't matter how far you run away from God. Even when, when God has put his mark on you, when God has put his mark on you, it doesn't matter how far you go away, hallelujah, even the sinners recognize you don't belong here. Even sinners recognize you don't fit in here. You know, you, you know they'll, they'll, they'll pass the duchy on the left-hand side, and by the time it gets to you, they say, no, man, no bother with that. Because they recognize you. It doesn't, that's right, Pastor Richards, it doesn't fit you. It, do, it doesn't matter how much clothes you buy. It doesn't matter how many shoes you buy. It doesn't matter how you try to put on the show. It doesn't matter how you try to act it when God has put his mark on you. Even sinners will recognize no matter how far you are, they will recognize, no, this, there's something different about this one. When, when they were looking for Jesus and, 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 they, and they saw Peter, they said, no, 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 no. You look like him. You, you sound like one of those people that talk like him. Yeah, I recognize the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you talk. No, you got to be one of them. Peter went as far as to start cursing bad words and start to speak all sorts of things. And they said, nah, 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 you one of them. I come to say to someone that has been speaking the wrong way, that has been living the wrong way, that has doing, been, been doing things the wrong way, that you're still recognizable. The mark of God is still on you. God still can recognize you. And even people on the outside will recognize the God in you. I'm, I'm trying hard to talk through this one, but you're making me want to preach this morning. They cast lots. So he went down to Joppa. Went down in the ship. Then he ends up down into the deep blue sea. So he starts here, goes down to Joppa, down into the ship. <laughs> I 
I tell you, the Bible will preach for it sometimes, for itself sometimes. And then he goes down into the sea. Down again. <laughs> it keeps going further and further down. I got to wrap this up. He goes down. So, <laughs> the miracle in this, I'm going to wrap this up. The miracle, one of the miracles in this is that Jonah does not want to go to pagans. He does not want to go to Nineveh. But here it is, he's on the ship again with pagans. Calling on their God. The pagans are calling on their God. And by the time they finish calling on their God, they, 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 they realize what's going on with Jonah. They throw him down into the sea. The, sto the storm gets calm. And they begin to serve the true and living God. Did you hear what I just said? You see, sometimes even when we're on the run, when God has his mark on you, he will use your life. The man did not want to go preach to any pagans, and here it is, pagans are still getting saved, Sister Bartley. What a mighty God we serve. Bless the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I'm not even going to preach anymore. Listen. When you get the chance, read this story for yourself. There's so much hidden inside of it. There's so much gems and so much things that God is saying through the scripture. But I want to remind you this afternoon. That God, what God has for you is greater than than what you can imagine. <laughs> Jonah just wanted to preach in Israel. But God had a Nineveh for him. Nineveh was a powerful, big city. And Jonah was the prophet and the evangelist that preached in Nineveh. And the entire country was saved. What I'm saying to you this afternoon, I'm saying to the church, I'm saying to everyone watching online, I'm saying to everybody collectively and individually, God has a city for you. You might be thinking just Israel. You might be just thinking on one level, Pastor Watson. But what God has for you is a great city. I wonder if anyone hear me this afternoon. When God calls you, he calls you great. Amen. And through you, can I talk to the church, Sutter Avenue? When we align with the will of God, there are cities that God has for us. Will we answer the call? We can run, but we cannot hide. Can I talk to the church? Oh, I forget some of past them. I can't talk to the church. No must. What God has for us. Jamaica, you can take this. England, you can take this. Canada, you can take this. But, but Sutter Avenue, let me say this to you too. More than all, what God has for us is greater than we can imagine. It seems insurmountable. It seems like it's impossible. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But it's great. And it is for us. There's more to the story, but we're going to wrap up now.
what God has called us for is a great city. God said to Jonah, should I not love? All right, let, should I not love this great city? Amen. Jersey City. Come on, somebody. I wonder if anybody with faith is in the building. Philadelphia. Atlanta. Miami. You see, God, God is just looking for a couple people that will believe. Lord, have mercy. Come on, England. London. Manchester. Wales. God has called us. And if we will align with Him, there are great cities for us. What God has for you is greater than what you can ever imagine. Greater than what you can ever think or ask. What God has for every one of you here is destined, designed, and created for you to affect that space. But we've got to come in alignment with Him. Even when it seems small, Brother Ricky, little is much when God is in it. <laughs> We're not laboring for wealth or fame. There's a prize, and you can win it if you go. If you go, if you go. Someone say, go tell Nineveh. Come on, look at someone and say, go tell Nineveh. I don't know what your Nineveh is this afternoon. Come on, worship team. But God is saying, go and tell Nineveh. Go talk to your Nineveh. Go and preach to your Nineveh. I don't know what your Nineveh is, but it's time to wake up and stop running and go to your Nineveh. Hallelujah. Where he leads me, I will go. For I've learned to trust him so. Hallelujah. There's an old Grace Phyllis song that said, Jesus shall lead me <laughs> all the way. Jesus shall lead me night and day. For he is the truest. Lord God, I feel like I'm still preaching. Friend to me. What God has for me, he'll get me there. He'll take me there somehow. We'll, he'll get you there. Whatever he has designed for you, he'll get you there. But don't run. Don't hide. Answer the call of God. Is there anyone in the house this afternoon? that wants to answer the call of God. You know what the call of God is. You know what the word of the Lord is. It doesn't matter how far you are. God is saying, I still got you in my hand. I still got a plan for you. God is saying, I still want you. I still have use for you. I still have need of you. I still need you in my kingdom. I still have work for you to do. It doesn't matter how far you have drifted. It doesn't matter how far you have sailed away. Is there one this afternoon? Is there one this afternoon that will say, God, I'm going to answer the call this afternoon. I'm done running. I'm done hiding. I'm done sleeping. I'm coming home to you. I want to do what it is you say you want me to do. Come on, lift those hands up if that's you this afternoon. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you this afternoon if that's you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My my will, my will I give to you. I'll, I'll do, do what you say to me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Hallelujah. To 
to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty and I on Jonah. Everybody, everybody, and I am available. We surrender to Him this afternoon, and we give Him our everything. Everybody in the house, would you lift your hands? Lift your hands, lift your hands. Pastor Watson, do you mind praying with I'll my sister? Do, do you mind praying with my sister? If you've been running, there's no time like the present. God says, what I have for you is greater than you can imagine, greater than you can think of. My plan for you, I know the plans that I have to you for you. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you peace. I know the plans I have for you, save the Lord. Hallelujah. talk to the Lord this afternoon as we surrender everything we surrender everything we surrender everything hallelujah bless the Lord hallelujah Not for fame, gladly will I toil and suffer.
Pilgrim journey, Savior, be one with me. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to give in the house. We've got to move forward. But I just know the presence of the Lord is in the house this afternoon. I believe. I don't believe in gimmicks, but I believe this is a great place to give. This is a great place to sow. So I want you to grab your hundreds, your fifties. Amen. Give on the level of your faith this afternoon. And give above the level of your faith this afternoon. Amen. If you believe God for 25, I want you to give 50. If you believe God for 100, I want you to give 200 this morning. I want you to give above the level of your faith this afternoon. Because he's able to do above what we can ask or think this afternoon. We give so much money to Walmart and Target and Amazon, and you name it. And all those ships keep breaking up, Pastor Richards. You buy new shoes, and before you know it, the bottoms start coming off. But with God, when you give to Him, He gives back, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. God is greater than Walmart, Target, Amazon. grab your offering this afternoon. Stand with me. My pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with me. This morning, this afternoon, I want to call this the Nineveh offering. So many times we invest in Joppa. But this, I believe this offering is going to be evangelistic in its reach. I call this, this afternoon, the Nineveh offering. And as you give, I want you to give evangelistically this afternoon. Amen. Raise your offering with me.
raise your offering with me. Amen. 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 As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. Come on, come on now, come on. As I move towards a triumphant life. Declare it with me, man. As I move towards a triumphant life. Are you moving towards a triumphant life? Amen. As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. I accept all. I accept all. Heavenly concepts. Heavenly concepts. And supernatural ideas. And supernatural ideas. That God has. That God has. To lead me to my Nineveh. To lead me to my Nineveh. I sow triumphantly. I sow triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I give triumphantly. And I live triumphantly. I live triumphantly. Amen. Those of you watching online, there are three ways you can give. Through pa PayPal, through GiveLify, and ttcog.com. If you are not able to deliver your gift right here in the sanctuary, everybody in the house, amen. Let us give. Come on, everybody. Let's de deposit our offering, our Nineveh offering. Come on, bring it down, bring it on down. Savior land, be one Savior led. Ministers, would you stretch your hands to this offering and pray for it at this time? Ministers, would you stretch your hands towards this offering?
thank everyone that was here. Amen. As we worship God together, would you put your hands together for Jesus? Lift up your hands. Put those hands together and give him praise this afternoon. Amen. Amen. It was a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. We're looking forward to next week. Amen. There's another word in the house next week, and we're expecting another miracle. Amen. But during the course of the week, I want to remind everybody in the house and everyone online, everyone, let's say together, live triumphant. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, those of you watching. We're going to do it together. I'm going to remind everybody in the house and those of you watching online during the course of the week, let's say together, live triumphantly. God bless you. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Ah. Be triumphant. Oh, 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 oh. Be triumphant.